Welcome to Fact or Freestyle. People love Dave Dory, and they always answer the phone when he calls. When we get him on Zoom, we ask him to confirm rumors. Let's see how far down the rabbit hole we go. Hello, hey, Chad. What's up, guys? what's up? Not much, man. What's up with you? Welcome, Scott. How are you? Scott Powell. Oh, uh, look at my boy. I have not seen uh, this dude in so long. I'm going to go put my Hector shirt on. Joe and I were just kind of feeling the, the, the lack of connection. And, and when we'd go to a contest or an event and we'd share stories and hear just like the craziness and some, some stuff that was like too like outlandish to even believe and some stuff that you knew actually happened. And we're like, man, we should just call people and get them to tell stories and put, you know, put a helmet on and have them wear a mouth guard and say, hey, how many times did you knock your teeth out? We're kind of doing the overview, which is originality. And I thought of you two because like with Scott, I feel like the, what you did with Voodoo Jam, like changed the contest scene. And then uh, Chad, obviously with your, your writing style and just how you progress and how you've been, you know, writing since the eighties and like, you're still just so current and still keeping it new and, and original. It's just my, my hats off to you, both of you for that. Usually these stories are like, they're mostly right, but there's one thing wrong or they're totally off. So um, let's do a quick round table. Let's go to Chad. Well, when I started writing and when I started seeing freestyle, it seemed like everyone was doing their own thing. Everybody had a different style. Not everybody was doing the same trick. So that just seemed what, to me, like that's what freestyle was doing your own thing. It wasn't like gymnastics where everybody looked the same. When I started filming, it wasn't to make productions for distribution. I was just wanting to do it so I could go home and watch it with my brother and my friends. I was always going to events. So yeah, just once I got the camera, I was filming everything. Okay, Scott, so what about you? Yeah, so for me, like writing BMX was the creative aspect and the originality aspect which is why I got into it. It was different than what everyone else was doing. And I, and I was attracted to the colors of the bikes, to the music people were riding to, to the photos. Everything was art for me with athletic parts put in it. And yeah. then, so I, I love the artistic side of it and the visuals, but then I was also an athlete, so I wanted to compete. I do remember reading something that I came across just in prepping for the show that you had named Chad as one of the top five. This was a 2013, Jesse Puente, Chad, Pete Brandt, Adam Quinn, and Justin Miller. Steve yep. Swope was a great announcer. Like, I, I love the way Matt Hoffman provided the CFB all those days. Everyone was just like going through this process of a competition rather than having this creative atmosphere that represented Flatland in a, in a different way. Those CFBs motivated me also to bring it to more of a creative environment, you know, so. Factor Freestyle, Fan Mail, Part 1. We kind of run into some, even some fans that have sent us letters and, well, wait, actually I have it here with this kid wrote a letter. Okay, so I'll just read it because it's pretty funny. It says, uh, Dear Factor Freestyle, I'm a 16 year old rider from the East Coast. I'm a regular at the Farmingham Skate Park in, in the Boston area. My question is, um, did you know who did the first tail whip air? There was an older guy, Bobby, that comes around sometimes and all kind, with all kinds of stories from the 80s. He told me a local guy from Stoughton named Joe Johnson did the first tail whip air. Is this true? It's great to know the history of this trick. It was actually from the area. He even said that... Uh, fact of freestyle. Joe Johnson had ants in his pants when he invented the vert tail whip. The reason Joe pulled his first tail with air was because he had ants in his pants, which made him twitch just enough to get the frame around. So <laughs> as far as I know, Joe Johnson did make the, the tail with air up. I mean, is that, do you guys have that history? In your, yeah, as in far your... as I know. Yep. Yeah, Can we as, talk as about... far as I know, yeah. Can we talk about the ants in the pants? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. What Let's did hear you hear, Joe, up. about the ants in the pants? I heard that they were on tour and they were sweating all day and there were <laughs> bugs in the pants that he put on and they bit his gooch and he twitched and that was the motion that needed to <laughs> hop the tail whip around. <laughs> I've never heard that, but now it all yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it all, it all comes full circle. <laughs> and Joe probably, Joe probably wouldn't want to admit it because he was such a shy, you know, like this guy from from this small town in, in Massachusetts, he, he would never admit that. 
<laughs> so fact or freestyle? I guess that's the question. I think fact. Fact? <laughs> yeah, fact. Fact or freestyle, fan mail, part two. You have one as it relates to a flatland right. trip. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Hello, Factor Freestyle. I love your show. I spent most of my time riding at Chango World in Cleveland, and I feel extremely lucky because the owner happily answers all of my questions about BMX for hours on end. One thing I'm not clear on, on the 23 Mag site, it says a decade is called like it is because it took the inventor, Fred Blood, 10 days to learn it. Yet it also says that Dean Palacio invented it, but called it the inverted boomerang. Scott from Chango tells me it was Dean who actually invented it. It seems like the decade is an important trick in history to have right. Scott says, it is the most important trick in all of history. I look forward to your response. Who invented it? Well, I'm going to go I'm going to go against anything Scott Powell says. So I'm going to go the opposite. So whoever he says invented it, it's the other person. Fred Blood. It's Fred Blood then. Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing and, and, in the magazine or reading in the magazine something about Fred Blood doing it first, but that was like before I had seen anyone else ride, so I don't know. But I mean, it is possible that someone else did it first. I mean, yeah, people were doing boomerangs, so it kind of was like a natural progression of a boomerang, and then even the name inverted boomerang makes sense. It does. It does. Yeah. I, I, I actually, I, I think boomerangs, I've always thought boomerangs the most important trick in the history of Man, freestyle. Man, yep. I love boomerangs. <laughs> I thought, I've always thought that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, boomerangs. Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah. so what bad. I know is that... Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going with Fred Blood. Wow, we got two for Fred Blood on this one, Joe. Okay. Good job. All right. We, get, we got another story. Dave, do you want to... Fact of freestyle, the Jose Vendetta. We call this one the Jose Vendetta. I'm kind of stoked I'm in none of these stories. I thought it was going to be something. <laughs> Just wait. I don't know. Do you have one, Scott? Do you have one? Yeah, you can share one. This is, this is the platform to share it, Joe. I mean. Oh, uh, I've got I've got Do you have all day? I mean. Hey, Chad, what's up? <laughs> hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yeah. You sound hey, hey, what up, Chad? Oh, God. Hey. There goes the neighborhood. I you can so, barely so you... hear you guys. Do I need to put headphones on or something? If you, you have them, turn up I think phone. that would work. Can you give me some? I don't have any. Yeah, I have some. <laughs> nice to have you, Chad. <laughs> All right, so we got we got a good one. <clears throat> we, we just started this. The story's called the Jose Vendetta. This is Jose Yanez. He has money now because Rad was re-released in streaming. And he's pissed off at Brian Blyther because Jose apparently mm -hmm. has Super 8 footage of him doing a ground tail whip that predates Blyther. And he's working with the people who redid Rad to modernize that. So he invented the backflip to sort of stick in Blyther's face, but now he's super pissed and he's going to flex on Brian Blyther by doing a tail whip using the Travis Pastrana bar spin motorcycle, and he's going to do it in Baldy Pipe. Dang. Well, I, I, I want to be there. Yeah, I want to see it. This is Factor Freestyle. Like, <laughs> have you guys heard anything related to this? I, I haven't not. heard anything about this, and I'm thinking it's freestyle. You think yeah, it's freestyle? I haven't heard anything. I'm, I'm, I haven't heard anything about it. I'm thinking it's freestyle. I need headphones. Chat you need more than headphones, dude. You need way more than headphones, buddy. I just ate shit, and then I was laying on the ground, and I look at my phone, and I had the Zoom call. I'm sorry I'm late. <laughs> I just tr just ate shit so bad. I saw I'm all red-faced. Well, maybe that's why you can't hear us, Chad. <laughs> well, I, I didn't crash on my head. I crashed on my knees. Why are you always on your knees? Yeah, always <laughs> on my knees. Yeah. yeah. That's how my lady likes it, though. I love you. Okay, so uh, let's go into the next segment, Joe. All right. Okay, so. Okay, fact of freestyle. Dave Norrie's comeback debut was in X Games as Chad DeGroote. In 99, I went down to San Francisco and I was with this kid that was like training with me, taking some of my classes. And I went to the X Games and uh, we're ah, watching Flatland. I know Lane. where you're going with this. I know. Yeah, because long story st short, I basically saw Chad and he had just competed and he was looking really bummed. And I'm like, what's the story, Chad? He's like, well, I didn't qualify. And I'm like, oh, that's too bad. Well, you know, maybe next time, you know, you know, just it's all it's all good. Sometimes we just have a bad day. And he's like, yeah, but that's the worst. That's not the worst part. The worst part is they're going to have all the losers go back out there and we have to do another run just to, to see how bad we lost. Yeah, who, and who's the better loser? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who's the better loser, right. I was feeling for him. I'm like, Chad, that, that, just go out there and do some old school stuff. Like, just do a completely mess around, goofy old school tricks. That's what you should do. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. The next time I saw his, his, Chad's coming up to go ride, and I said to him, I go, why don't you have me ride for you? And he's like, what? And I go, yeah, I, got, I snuck my bike in. I'll just ride for you. And he's like, what? He really literally took his hat off, took his jersey off and put it on me. And I went out there and I practiced 
practice with all the riders. Now, this was uh, after the cameras were done, but everyone was still there watching, right? It's a big, you know, big crowd around. And they announced Chad DeGroote, and I come out doing a bar hop, and I do all my 80s routine, like, to the T. So, Chad, did I miss any part of that? That's pretty heads-on. Like, I didn't want to be first place loser. The place, I've never heard so many cheers and chants and support and everything like that. And I do remember when I got done. I mean, that's like Haro stuff. That's like money sponsors. That's like a lot of eyes staring at you doing stuff. And I got done and I was like, oh shit, I should have just won that. But I'd be like like fifth or sixth or seventh, which didn't even matter then. And I, I would go up to my team manager and he had the worst look on his face. I'm like, oh, f I'm fired. Like I just blew it. They spent all this money shipping us all there, putting us up in hotels, feeding us, priming us a little. And I fucked up. And then he looked at me and he goes, you're lucky that was really funny and cool. And it, it got like more promo by having you do it than it would have me. You know, I was like, and I appreciate that. That was, it was such a good story. Yeah, but Chad, <laughs> there, there's more to it, I think, because Tell I, me. there's a question I have for you today. Looking at what happened. So then you went to Haro, you left Haro, and then they discontinued the master. I mean, this really had profound effect on the whole industry. And oh, is how I see it. Yeah, it, I think my first gray hair popped out the next day. Uh, I feel so bad, Chad. I, I just was trying to have a little fun. And here I just ruined your life pretty much. <laughs> and you discontinued the master. Maybe we need to get Tony D on the phone about this. Ask him the details of this. Shout out Tony D. Tony D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. I don't know how to make it up to you. Fact or freestyle. At Circle of Balance, Des Marzen survived a punch in the face from Scott O'Brien because he separated his shoulder while announcing the contest. I think about I Kobe Japan. Yeah. A lot of sake. Hey, did Scott, did what? you who <laughs> whose face did you punch in Japan and then threw a garbage bag at him too? Oh, I know who, uh, he, who I know who it was. Now the story the story is <laughs> Did you throw oh, a garbage bag at him first and then and then you yeah. hit him in the face? I, no, he threw the garbage bag at me and then I punched him in his face. Let me see your arms. My arms? Yeah, you, you fucking save people, and you, you're you like a manly man, and you punch a dude in the face, and he has no marks. How do you pull that shit off? <laughs> oh, no, there's a picture. <laughs> no, no, he What's does. That? Go um, look at um, Circle of Balance Instagram, and there's a I would, picture I of would him. think his face would look like hamburger. And and well, you, and you, well, you gave well, him like a, a butterfly part, kiss. <laughs> there's a part to this story. Earlier that night, when I was emceeing, I was a little intoxicated and uh hero morisaki pulled this incredible trick and my stupid ass rolls on the floor and i separated my shoulder yeah, so my, yeah. My, my shoulder was separated so we're mc like i'll be uh des was aggravating everybody all weekend so it was, <laughs> des, it was des that i punched in the face everybody was tired of him he was pissing everybody off aggravating us all weekend so we're at the club Everybody's having a good time with partying, DJing, like MC and all this stuff. We come down the stairs. Dez just won't shut up. He's what aggravating everybody. I told Dez, I said, dude, oh, shut man. the fuck up. And he threw a garbage <laughs> bag at me. And so I punched him in his face. Damn. <laughs> hey, how we going, Ted? Like, yeah. I mean, and my shoulder was separated. So it was probably about a 30% punch, which was probably a good thing. But, and then it was. Everybody was a little drunk, like it is what it is. So, and then, um, and then the uh, the way the story goes is uh, Ephraim kind of talked me down, like to walk away. And then Vicky Gomez says, "He's a fireman. He doesn't think. He just does." And, <laughs> and the rest is history. He's like, "We don't punch anybody in Europe." And I was like, "We don't throw fucking garbage bags at people in, in America." So, <laughs> you know, I think he went swimming that night in the canal a few times, maybe, and some other I, shit too, right? He was, he was what, as we say in New Orleans, he was thrown off that night. Hey, thanks again, guys, for taking some time and just shooting, you know, crap with us and getting stuff out there. It's great. Hell yeah, it's fun. Thanks for the invite. All right, of man. Course. Hey, good to see Peace you out. guys, man. Y'all have see a great good. rest of your weekend. Uh, yeah, you too, boys. All right. All right, man. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey. All right.